the reason why they cut off his internet now wasn't the release of any secret uh, documents. It was simply because he stood up. I've decided to come down. The United Kingdom, the European Union, is a party to the 1951 Convention on Refugees. Uh, it states that it adheres to the right for all people to seek asylum, to receive asylum, and to enjoy asylum. Well, over there you've got a publisher and a, and a journalist who's been held incommunicado for 70 days. And Britain doesn't give a fuck. Can't you hear me say, can't you hear me say, can't you hear me say? It doesn't give a fuck. It doesn't give a fuck about what he's published and what he's brought to our attention and what we have learnt through him and WikiLeaks. It doesn't give a fuck. simply because they're using a trumped up bail charge. Uh, a failing to surrender to bail in this country is a criminal offence in itself. However, if he were to surrender to that police bail for not turning up at court, there is no court for him to turn up to. Because there is no charge, there is no investigation, there is nothing. Sweden went home. Say, 
And by the way, Sweden said they'd had enough of the idea of chasing them on some fabricated charge three months before the charge was actually dropped. And why was that? Because the British government turned around and said, can you keep those charges in place for a bit longer? I hear a voice calling the night The shout of pain fades with the light And I see a face with so many eyes I hear the words knowing their lies Can't you hear me say, can't you hear me say, can't you hear me say now I have to ask, why? Why would they say that? Why would they say, can you keep him in there? Can you keep your charges in place for longer? We don't want you to drop the charges yet, even though they're bullshit charges. If the UK did not throw away the Vienna Convention of the other day, it is because the world was watching. And the world was watching because you were watching. So the next time somebody tells you that it's pointless, to defend those rights that we hold dear. Remind them of your vigil in the dark before the embassy of Ecuador. Remind them how, in the morning, the sun came up on a different world and a courageous Latin American nation took a stand for justice. I hear a voice calling the night But then the, the UN turn around and say, well, he's being arbitrarily detained by this government in this country, arbitrarily detained, and he should be freed immediately, and he should be compensated. And I agree with that, because the guy's been in that building there for six years. And so to those great people, I thank President Correa for the courage he has shown in considering and in granting me political asylum. And I also thank the government and in particular Foreign Minister Ricardo Castillo who upheld the Ecuadorian Constitution and its notion of universal citizenship in their consideration of my asylum. And to the Ecuadorian people for supporting and defending this constitution. And I also have a debt of gratitude to the staff of this embassy, whose families really love them, and who have shown me hospitality and kindness despite the threats we all received. But he's been in that building for six years and you don't hear a dicky bird out of the government about it. They're like, oh, it's nothing to do with us. Well, it is to do with you. Because when the, when the UN says he's being arbitrarily de detained and he should be released, like, the government says, well, fuck you. Fuck you. Right, but then the government is always the first to jump on the human, uh, the United Nations bandwagon when it's something that aids them in their fucking bombing of Syria or bombing of Lebanon or bombing of fucking Yemen. Right, in there is a bona fide journalist. And to the people of the United States, the United Kingdom, Sweden and Australia who have supported me in strength even when their governments have not. And to those wiser heads in government who are still fighting for justice, your day will come. To the staff, supporters and sources of WikiLeaks whose courage and commitment and loyalty has seen no equal. To 
to my family and to my children who have been denied their father. Forgive me. We will be reunited, reunited soon. As WikiLeaks stands under threat, so does the freedom of expression and the health of all our societies. We must use this moment to articulate the choice that is before the government of the United States of America. Will it return to and reaffirm the values, the revolutionary values it was founded on? Or will it lurch of the, of the precipice, dragging us all into a dangerous and oppressive world in which journalists fall silent under the fear of prosecution and citizens must whisper in the dark. In this country, WikiLeaks has been recognised as a legitimate media outlet. Therefore, you've got a real journalist, a real reporter, a real publisher in there being absolutely claustrophobically choked to death. And no one gives a f The United States must renounce its witch hunt against WikiLeaks. The United States must dissolve its FBI investigation. The United States must vow that it will not seek to prosecute our staff for our supporters. The United States must pledge before the world that it will not pursue journalists for shining, shining a light on the secret crimes of the powerful. There must be no more foolish talk about prosecuting any media organization, be it WikiLeaks or be it the New York Times. The U.S. administration's war on whistleblowers must end. Thomas Drake, William B., John Perricu, and other heroic whistleblowers must, they must, be pardoned or compensated for the hardships they have endured as servants of the public record. His, his sight has deteriorated so badly because he can't see past 20 feet of the corridor and that's it. He hasn't, he hasn't seen past 20 feet in any direction for six years. You know? And we've got to understand that everyone's entitled to medical care. Yeah, no matter. And, you've, and again, we've got to understand that Julian, Julian Assange has applied for and been granted political asylum. world was watching because you were watching. So the next time somebody tells you that it is pointless to defend those rights that we hold dear, remind them of your vigil in the dark before the MC of Ecuador. And he was right in his little interview at the window when he said, when one is entitled to enjoy asylum, to enjoy the peace of asylum, so I am grateful to those people and governments of Argentina, Bolivia, Brazil, Chile, Colombia, El Salvador, Honduras, Mexico, Nicaragua, Argentina, Peru, Venezuela, and to all other Latin American countries who have come out it's about the fact that we're sitting there and watching this happen and doing very little about it just going oh that's terrible mustn't grumble though because we're British but what can we do and to the army private remain in a military prison in Fort Leavenworth, Kansas, who was found by the United Nations who endured months of torturous detention in Quantico, Virginia, and who has yet 
after two years in prison to see a trial, he must be released. Bradley Manning must be released. This man's not guilty of a crime. He hasn't been to court. He's not in contempt of any court. He's never been charged. He's not been convicted. But yet he still cannot leave that building and he still cannot communicate with his friends, his family and everyone else. So we're at an impasse here, you know? It's either we make a, a noise about this or we allow the last bastion of truth-telling to be annihilated by the wills of military industrial complexes because that's what it boils down to. On Wednesday, Bradley Manning spent his 815th day of detention without trial. The legal maximum is 120 days. On Thursday, my friend Nabil Rajab President of the Bahrain Human Rights Centre was sentenced to three years in prison for a tweet. On Friday, a Russian man was sentenced to two years in jail for a political performance. There is unity in the oppression. There must be absolute unity and determination in the response. They don't like the fact that he bubbled Hillary. Clinton, I mean, even Trump doesn't like the fact that he bubbled Hillary. I mean, he is not aligned with the left or the right. He's a fucking decent journalist who calls it like it is. He doesn't, he doesn't worry about whether he'll get an invite to the next fucking um, reporters meeting. He doesn't care. He reports the truth. And the truth is really doing some damage to, 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 to the American government to, and to the world globalist government. It's, it's, it's all becoming proof in the pudding. Now, next Tuesday, not tomorrow, but next Tuesday, there's going to be a rally here. And I would hope that those within spitting distance of being able to get here, come down. Because we'll have teas, we'll have coffee. There'll be speakers, there'll be music, and there'll be an opportunity to express your gratitude to the guy that really is the whistleblower of the century. WikiLeaks is a bona fide media outlet in this country. And at this time, our government is holding him hostage in there. People are having their strings pulled here. And everyone's concentrating on what's going on in Trafalgar Square and nobody gives a fuck about the real story in there.